Yes, a project. Throw them in the documentary. Shoot one, day one, take one. It's called the Yesa. Hey, what's up? I'm Chaz Momoto. Josh Stevens. I'm Brian. Evan Fujimoto. My name is Alex Schrager. Chase Mana Kohani. Drew Henme. Matt Taylor. Brandon Harper. And I'm a songwriter. A singer, songwriter, and producer. I produced and co-wrote a few tracks. I'm a musician, songwriter, and a vocalist. Co-founder, co producer, producer, songwriter, songwriter with, with the, the Bruise. Bruise. And I make music for a living. Chase Kohani and I met in 2012 at the Nahoku Hanohano Awards. And in 2017, we were both participants in the state of Hawaii's music immersive Creative Lab. Creative Lab exists to empower young creatives like us and provides us opportunities to network and learn skills we otherwise would not have easy access to. After the Creative Lab, we were prompted to organize ourselves to take advantage of the opportunities and the skills we learned. And so Chase and I started hosting our own writing camps. But one of the things that we realized was it's very expensive to make music. And that's where Bright Basement came into play. My company's Bright Basement. It's a uh, sort of like a record label production company. I have sort of a long winding history making music. And some of the music I've made has been like under the stress of working for clients and very isolating. And so I had this very um, ritual of feeling constantly stressed out and like I had to solve every problem myself. And so the spirit of Bright Basement is really me just creating a little infrastructure for me to put out songs with my friends. We kind of convinced Brian, maybe, you know, win-win, you're looking to make more music, maybe spend some of that money on us. And here we go, Bright Basement camp. Call all of our, all of our closest collaborators in our little family and here we are. I got involved with the ESSA project um, after Brian Hall rejected me. He had a, uh, a change of heart and uh, decided that uh, having another Asian in the group would be a, a good addition to the crew. Prior to the Hawaii Songwriting Festival and this camp, I was actually working as a part-time IT at a local elementary school here. Right before the Songwriting Festival, I actually quit my job. After the Hawaii Songwriting Festival, we went straight into this songwriting camp, which was just completely eye-opening. I had been working with Brian for several years. I, I played his band Tents as well. And he mentioned it to me and he said, hey, Hawaii in October, there's this awesome festival that you should be part of and then we're gonna do a writing camp. And I was like, I don't know, <laughs> that sounds scary. Chaz called me up and he said, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some songs and I got super excited to do it. Chase was originally supposed to sing a lot of these songs, but he lost his voice at the Hawaii Songwriting Festival. And so, you know, he failed his first assignment. I actually went to a concert and they had John Cruz there and Brother Nolan. And so I just started chi hooing out of my mind and I just like completely lost my voice. And so that's how Brandon came into the picture, bra bra. So I got involved with the Yesa through Chazu Momoto. Uh, with the bruise, they needed someone to cut some vocals for it, and uh, our schedules lined up, so it was good. The chemistry working with these people was phenomenal. Felt like everybody had their own pocket to fit in, and everybody was thriving. In my first writing camp, I really didn't know exactly what to expect, and I probably had a bit of a preconceived notion about it. And I think that going into it, it really helped me develop my artistry in a room with a lot of other artists and producers at the same time, and how to collaborate in a way that's more fluid. With these camps, you know, we're, we have goals in mind and we try to hit those goals, whether it's like a certain amount of time being there. And so we start our mornings off with a brief and a vision of what songs we're going to be writing and what's the vibe, what's, what's the feel of the song. It was a blast. I mean, we had three rooms right next to each other, kind of just running back and forth. Everyone was kind of pitching in. People jumped around from room to room to help out which group needed more help. And I thought that was just an efficient way of writing music. I think the reason our camps produce more music faster is because we've had years of experience doing this, but also like we're working with multiple producers and you know a few writers, top liners. Typically when I work on music, I'm not often working with other producers. Predominantly, I'm produ doing the bulk of the production. I'm working with a top liner, I'm working with an artist. Um, so this was a unique experience working with a bunch of other really, really talented producers. I would say that you have a lot of people to throw more sounds into the fire. The more producers you have, the more top lining you can get done. I would describe the music on the album as like really light, warm pop music. To me, it feels like the soundtrack of that trip, which is the highlight of my life. Sunshine and 
just being happy and laughing with people. The kind of EP you just throw in the car when you gotta drive down to the store and pick up, I don't know, chicken, beer. My background is very classical. I grew up playing the trumpet. So I knew how to read music, I knew how to score music. One of the roles in the camp was scoring the brass parts that were in the song so that we can hire live instrumentalists to record themselves on an online session. Try to talk and use our vernacular here in Hawaii as much as we can. And it makes so much sense that that music came out of Hawaii. My favorite part about the writing camp was seeing songs come to life. I think we all as creatives sometimes struggle with like imposter syndrome. Within four days we had seven complete songs completely like produced, ready to go. You know, waking up and saying like, I know I'm a songwriter, I'm a producer, but can I songwrite? Can I write a song? Can I produce a song? And to see at the end of four days, like five plus songs come to life, it's the best drug in the world. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite song on the album is When You Call My Name. 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 It's just like really big and anthemic. I love how the song can be both religious, romantic, and ambiguous all at the same time. When I lay my head on my pillow at night, I, it runs through my head. My favorite song from the project is Salt Wash Me. Salt Wash Me. Renegade Crew. Blend. I think my favorite was Ride or Die. I think Drew killed it on the vocals. I really like the vocals. That was the first song that I worked on the camp. It was the first thing that we worked on. Therefore, that was my first song ever in a camp. When my heart was pounding. Good feelings all around. My favorite thing about making the music that we made, definitely just hanging out with everybody. That was a very silly camp. We worked really long days, but as you may be seeing in the B-roll that you're being shown right now, it's just ridiculous chaos. I think the funniest thing that happened was I was in a room with Chase, Drew, Evan, and Alex. We stock a variety of beverages and we have some hard seltzers for, you know, the end of the night just for when everybody's hanging out. It's 10 a.m. and Chase is grabbing Topo Chico's out of the fridge. The funny thing about Chase is that he doesn't check to see what he's grabbing. Alex sees Chase drinking a seltzer. I had recalled him saying, I don't drink. Like, he doesn't drink at all, right? And by his third drink, Alex had said, like, hey, isn't it kind of early to be drinking? King. I'm the youngest one here, right? And I was like, yeah, Chase, like, you know those are alcoholic, right? And Chase had no idea that he's just like getting hammered at 10 a.m. in the morning. It was just this blow up moment where it was just like, what? You know, he was just feeling good. I was the only non-drinker, the true non-drinker. It wasn't our fault. He just didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> The first time I met Chase was actually in a hotel room. And I was supposed to room with Chase and Josh, but nobody had told Chase that I was gonna room with them. The first key to rooming with Chase and Evan was not telling Chase that Evan was going to be there. I slept on the floor on the side of the bed next to Evan without Chase knowing. He thought I was actually Evan in the bed. In the middle of the night, he just hears <sighs> There were two inhales and two exhales during the night and he was just wondering like, where's this demon breathing coming from? <laughs> There's no idea how two people are breathing at the same time. Chase was a lot of fun to work with. He brought a lot of great energy to the group. He always brings a lot of laughs. A cool breeze that would just blow through the room and slam out some lyrics and melodies. Although he does leave all of his stuff on the ground. He kind of glues the whole group together. He would also blow into the room and make a dumbass joke, and then <laughs> he'd keep us laughing, you know, which is great. I think Brian Hall is probably one of the most interesting characters I've met. I mean, he wears red Crocs everywhere, right? Like, I've never seen him wear any other type of footwear other than that. I really can't get enough red Croc activity from this man. I also like that he wears red Crocs, like, no matter what the occasion is. Alex Schrager had a lot to say about my Crocs. And, um, and I appreciated that because he's the youngest and, you know, um, he, even he was caught off guard by my Crocs. Brian had this ability to steer the ship and keep this kind of 30,000 foot view of everything that was going on. But I thought he did a really great job of just sort of overseeing everything and steering the, steering the ship. He, his attention to detail and his ability to like express his vision. He knows exactly what he wants and he knows how to get it. He was also able to keep the morale high, keep everything fun. Help the team pivot in the right direction. What do you think of Bra Bra? Of who? <laughs> Who's Bra Bra? <laughs> Wait, is that the white guy? Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, as a vocalist, 
he's incredible. I mean, his flow, in addition to his ability to sing melodically, was incredible. And he's amazing. And he just, he knocked the songs out of the park. Gosh, Brandon, what a voice. Great attitude. You know, like, you'll give feedback to Bra Bra. Instead of, like, being down on himself, like, he'll just be wanting to create the next thing. We just have fun making dope music. Working with Chaz uh, at this camp, was incredible to see because he was essentially kind of the ringleader in a lot of ways. Aside from Brian, I mean, keeping everything moving forward, he was integral to the process on top of his ability to produce tracks. On the last day of the writing camp, we had to record the gang vocals that Alex was producing in one of the hotel rooms. Brian encouraged me to do my character uh, gang vocals, which requires me to get a little, you know, just a little buzz. And so there was this bottle of uh, Kohana tequila in his room that they weren't going to finish. And so I, I had a couple of glasses of that and got into character and threw a little party and went to the hot tub and I got to see Chaz just letting loose. I normally never drink on the job ever, but I had to get into the Chaz characters for the gang vocals. Drew Hemi is a uh, very positive presence in the room. He's a great writer too. We were trying to write gospel music and he by far got the closest to writing gospel music of anyone. <laughs> Working with Evan was great. It was the first time that I met him. In the weeks leading up to the camp, I thought Evan was a completely different person. So when Evan walked in the door the first day, I looked at him and I was like, who's this guy? Evan's good, man. I mean, what, what can you say? Like the sweetest does it all. Obviously horn arrangements are killing. I'm glad that this Evan Fujimoto happened to be the Evan Fujimoto that I work with because me and Evan really clicked on a personal level and on a production level. Having Alex on his first writing camp with us was really good actually. I felt like he stepped up his game and he really tried to put as much value into the crew. He was so funny. He was super helpful, but I think first and foremost, he's just a character that like always had me smiling. We were set up next to each other for a majority of the time. Like I could hand him something that needed like make this cool. I I didn't know Maddie was a rock star until like maybe a few days in, and then all of a sudden I realized I was like, oh. High School Chaz was the biggest Motion City soundtrack fan. That guy's chops on bass is incredible. His production ability was incredible. Bass lines that are more memorable than Michael Jackson songs. Okay, that's a that's pretty high. That's pretty high. <laughs> that's pretty high, but. <laughs> In retrospect, looking back on this camp, I think it was the most successful camp we've ever planned. It really is a group effort. You never know how these things are gonna go, what the chemistry is gonna be like. I wouldn't have done anything differently because I really wanted to just learn about how people normally do those camps. Going into this camp with Brian, I was so nervous. I, I didn't know what to expect. And after going through that, after going through that kind of stress and, that, and, and then coming out the other side knowing that, okay, I can do that kind of stuff. One thing I learned about myself from working on the Yesa is that one of my strengths is actually making the song sound bigger and hit harder. You know, I, I think the biggest thing I learned was just to like trust in the, the group process and let people do what they do. Since this is the first project that I'm gonna be releasing in a while, it just, it feels really good um, to do it collaboratively. I continue to collaborate with the Brews because I believe in what they're doing. What they're doing is getting Hawaii's artists connected to the sync world, and that's huge. That's income, that, that means that Hawaii artists can provide for their families. If you give people a chance and you create an atmosphere for them to thrive and uh, fail in, I think you can make some really cool music. Uh, my alignment with that and my goals are perfectly in line, so I love working with the Bruce. I think collaboration forms the best type of art. A lot of times, Collaboration is not a part of the music making process, especially on the independent level. And so I think this is project I'm hoping is a testament to a bunch of guys getting together that don't know each other and just seeing what happens and being open to that experience, you know? I don't really come from a very privileged background, I, I should say. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of hardships back home. And normally being an artist or anything in the arts as a songwriter, you just you can't make a living. It took a lot of work, a lot of hard work, and a lot of grace over my life. At the end of the day, if you set your eyes on that goal, you can do it. You can really rise above, you know, it doesn't matter what your community is doing or what it looks like for you in your life, you can really go for it and uh, make it work. It takes a lot of work though.
And my hope for this project and maybe this video is to encourage other local artists and producers and writers to just collaborate more. And especially in a collaboration setting, how much we can do, not just as one, but as many. Even though we might not have all been familiar with each other or even the process of making music in a writing camp, that other people would find courage and try it out themselves. That more people would collaborate and get together and you know make great art together. You know what I'd love to do next, the next time I work with The Brews and Brian Hall? I would love to do like dancey hip hop music uh, with like really catchy melodic hooks and choruses. I think that'd be awesome.